Hello and welcome to the Package Managers Weekly Sync for uh, the 23rd of July 2019. Uh, we're still trying to work out exactly what this meeting is going to look like but uh, for now what we'll do is hand over to Michelle for an update of what we've been working on uh, on the Package Managers Task Force over the past week. Oh, okay. Uh, right, I need to pull up, I'm going to pull up a thing so we can see a visual of a thing. It's going to be great. Um, but in the meantime, um, if you're watching this, this video and you want to know things, uh, maybe one of the most important things is that we are uh, trying to improve our uh, communications outwards. So here, let's see. Let's see what is a moment. It's coming. It's coming. Da, 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 da. Uh, here we are, that'll work. I will share my screen. Oh, actually, I should show you. I'm going to do this one. Let's do Riot. IRC. Um, if you'd like to stay in touch and like updated with what we're, we've been up to, we have an IRC channel. It is on Freenode and it is IPFS slash package manager or hyphen package hyphen managers. There's also a link. Uh, to that channel name from our um, repo readme. It's in a little badge at the top, so if you need to find it, it is there. And we intend on dropping an update into that channel uh, every week, pretty much. Um, I'm sure I will fall asleep one week and miss a week, but in general, <laughs> there should be an update there at about a weekly basis on what we've been up to in this task force, um, approximately in the previous week and what we're planning on doing with links to GitHub issues. So if you want, you can dive in and learn more. And um, if something interests you there, you can reach out to us and we would love to hear more. But so this past week, what we've been doing is one, understanding the state of Go IPFS performance and user experience um, in relation to package manager stuff. Uh, started a performance analysis of IPFS add, lots of interesting things there. Uh, some quick fix work to documentation. We hope to do a lot of these small things over as we find uh, ways to improve UX or improve um, kind of people's understanding of how to use IPFS for package management. Um, also, one of the big things is just that we've been, we're a new team. So learning how to work together is a big deal. We now have a daily standup, once a week sprint planning, once a week demo and um, understand how to work together better. Um, and then, as I mentioned, one of the big things is just trying to improve our inward and outward comms uh, because it's the thing we should be doing and we want to include um, our community and what we're working on and give folks opportunities to um, understand what we're up to that, uh, that are a little bit simpler to, to follow along with rather th than um, just getting all the GitHub issue updates, which are all over our ecosystem. So we want to summarize that for you out there if you're watching this and make that a bit easier. Um, if also, if you like packaging facts, we're gonna send out one every week, you know, cardboard shipping box, interesting stuff, it's great. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that's all, all the things for right now. Um, Andrew, what did I miss? Or anyone else on this call, what did I miss? <laughs> uh, one other interesting thing that popped up a couple of days ago is that uh, one of the developers from Parrot Security OS uh, which is a um, an Ubuntu fork distro that's focused on security has started mirroring their um, their repository onto IPFS, uh, looking at using Cluster to be able to um, to get some community mirroring uh, using directly the kind of um, the features of Cluster rather than having people all sync and then add uh, kind of do their own. IPFS setup instead being able to say like, oh, can I follow the uh, um, the Parrot OS cluster and just pin whatever they add on there, which is really cool. Um, hoping to have a conversation with them around the uh, some of the challenges they found whilst importing that stuff. He's also, um, I think his name is Francesco, uh, has been working on a pull request for the apt uh, IPFS transport. Oh, there we go. Someone's sharing that screen, Michelle. Um, and basically updating that uh, the transport plugin for apt that means that apt can 
talk directly to IPFS, a local IPFS daemon, uh, so that that's using the latest um, Python, which or at least Python 3, so that it basically works with all of the things in their distro, which is really nice because that plugin has probably not been updated in over a year. Uh, potentially could be something that we could suggest as uh, the best way for an end user to consume packages from a uh, IPFS backed mirror for uh, Debian or Ubuntu. I believe it works in both, um, which is uh, very cool. That's the uh, the only thing I think we uh, didn't include in that uh, as a kind of a community related piece of work that's going on. Molly, did you have an update from uh, Webcam. Yeah, so um, I met someone who I know his first name and I don't know his last name. His name is Sean. Um, he's from the uh, Secure Scuttlebutt community. And um, I don't know how familiar everyone here is with DWebCamp, but the premise going into it was iffy to non-existent internet, internet access during this um, three-week gathering of uh, DWeb builders and hackers. And um, because of that, one of the things that people were, were interested and excited about were how do we bring the tools that we would need to do some some actual hacking and building while we're all in on this farm in the middle of nowhere with maybe non-existent Wi-Fi together. Um, and so it was a couple of threads about people bringing large packages of, of like, you know, NPM and other things like that. We talked about bringing NPM on IPFS, but um, shipping and performance both um, kind of was like, well, maybe not quite this time. Um, but uh, he did some work to port cargo to IPFS. And I don't know quite what the, the status of that is, whether he actually finished it or the takeaway was, oh, there's actually going to be internet before he, he finished that, that port. But um, cool that someone from the, the Rust Scuttlebutt community, I believe, just kind of was able to, to get started and you know, from, from listening to him, he didn't have any hiccups or um, concerns with it. He, it was just like, you know, how much time is he going to invest in doing it? Um, given that, hey, suddenly there's going to be Wi-Fi and you don't have to worry about it as much anymore. Um, but I thought that was pretty cool that people were able to pick it up. And I encouraged him to come to this weekly call if he ever has time. Yeah, the, uh, there was a addition to Rust, uh, I want to say kind of March that basically added an airplane mode to cargo like command line interface directly, which basically says like, can you, when installing things locally, can you be a little bit more aggressive with the caching of the things that you download? And I believe from the, uh, like I can't remember exactly where the link is, but the I've seen that um, the kind of ongoing work on GitHub and it relies on that and basically taking the stuff that you would download using Cargo's airplane mode uh, and dropping that in IPFS so that it's easy to share with everyone else. And it has both the metadata and the tarball source code to be able to uh, allow anyone to replicate that, uh, which is really neat because it's kind of a combination of the client being friendly to not having to chat with its registry all the time, opens up doors to uh, to allow all the clients uh, to do all kinds of interesting things uh, with the way that they store that data or where they download that data from. Um, cool. Has anyone else got any updates or things that they'd like to share? Perhaps a very high level update that we can just get on the recording just in case is that we talked about um, in sprint planning that we have, what, three major areas of focus most likely um, for this quarter and we're getting those defined. I probably can't name them off the top of my head as well as Andrew, you can, but if you feel comfortable, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, perhaps just let uh, Molly and Jim and anyone else listening on the call, um, the recording later, uh, know where we're at. Uh, I, can, I can try. Um, so one is IPFS adds performance. So um, looking into ways that it can, uh, we can import very large directories of files. We're looking at 
up to a million files and about a terabyte of data in the different ways that we can improve the performance of that. One from scratch for people setting up a mirror after uh, downloading a whole copy from somewhere else. And two, when I go to update that, usually via rsync, I'm pulling down the um, anything that's changed since the last time I downloaded a copy from a mirror. Uh, the performance of doing those two actions currently is for a very large repository, takes a very long time. And uh, we're already seeing some kind of nice potential for uh, ways of improving that. Um, Dirk's been doing lots of research on that and you can find his issue on the package managers repo. Uh, then we have uh, a slightly different approach to thinking about how to change the performance characteristics of, uh, especially when it comes to adding things uh, that have been updated, which is mounting IPFS as a writable file system. This is the work that Dominic's been looking at uh, and that basically means that we can interrupt really nicely with existing tooling that people who are maintaining mirrors for uh, file system based package managers use all the time. So that's things like rsync or SCP. Being able to act like a file system means that only the files that are changing are going to be ones that are written and that we can transparently update uh, an IPNS record, for example, every time that we're um, every time that we're writing to a uh, to disk, disk being IPFS, uh, and then the uh, the kind of there's also the user experience side of the whole process of doing this setup and maintenance, and that's things like in general the performance of the different functions that you're going to be doing should be not painful so things like ipns being faster is uh like something that people will get stuck on and uh adine has been working on making that uh much more enjoyable to use and hopefully that will then start to push through a number of user experience elements that aren't performance related into ipns and sorry, my internet is is amazing. Uh, I, I this is with a new router, and it's not made any difference. So it's definitely uh, not the Wi-Fi connection to my phone line. Um, so I'm not sure how much of that came through, but it came through on the recording because I'm recording it locally. Uh, so you can watch it later. <laughs> um, we're also looking at uh, improving or like trying to come up with a golden path or like the the way like a one natural easy way of setting up and maintaining a mirror on ipfs for a linux distro uh, package repository and that's going to have guides and also some user experience kind of smoothing off of edges to ensure that users can't accidentally shoot themselves in the foot or that people that are mirroring from other mirrors don't end up creating entirely different hashes along the way uh, because they use a different flag. And to try and get to the point where it's, uh, it's kind of anyone can set up a, a Linux uh, repository mirror on IPFS without um, kind of tearing their hair out in the process. And that covers a lot of different things, but those are the kind of the three areas that we're really focusing on at the moment, I think. That was beautiful, thank you. So uh, one thing to think about for next week is if there is any particular topic that someone would be interested in going diving deeply into, uh, it could be related to uh, IPFS uh, and how that a particular tool inside of the IPFS toolbox helps with package management, or it could be um, something more in general with package management, or potentially it could be um, 
an interview with someone either within IPFS or externally that has some interesting experience uh, trying to do uh, IPFS and package manager related stuff. So don't have to come up with it now, but if you have any ideas, then uh, there is an issue, issue number one on the package management repo uh, that's a great place to drop thoughts in. Um, and that's pretty much all we have time for. So thanks for everyone for coming and uh, we will see you next week.